Hello, my name is Findimus, and in this video we're going to be learning about override class declarations by styling ID attributes. That's a mouthful. It's basic CSS if you want to follow along. The link will be down in the description below. Let's begin. We just proved that browsers read CSS from top to bottom in order of their declaration. That means that in the event of a conflict, the browser will use whichever CSS declaration came last. Notice that if we even had put blue text before pink text in our H1 elements classes, it would still look at the declaration order and not the order of their use. And they're referring to this here. They're not going to determine the order based on this. It's going to determine the order based on these two declarations between the style tags. I showed that in the last video, by the way. And so the last thing read as the editor and the reader comes out of this style section, the element section, is the blue text declaration. So therefore, when you call both of the text down here in the class, the blue is what's going to show up on the screen, on your web page, even if blue text is written first or last here. You can see it's written last, but even if you take that out and you put it here, it will still be priority no matter which order it's in. And that's just because, as we already explained. But we're not done yet. There are other ways that you can override CSS. Do you remember ID attributes? Yes, I do. Let's override your pink text and blue text classes and make your H1 element orange by giving the H1 element an ID and then styling that ID. Give your H1 element the ID attribute of orange text. So we'll come down here after the blue text just to get that ready here. So the H1 should have an ID and the ID ID, the space there, ID equals, and we'll put the uh, quotes, orange dash text. Leave the blue text and the pink text uh, classes on your H1 element. Create a CSS declaration for your orange text ID in your style element that's up here. Here's an example of what it should look like. It should be the hash sign, as you see there with the brown text. So we're going to go ahead and put a hash. Instead of a period, you use the hash. That's for IDs. And they take priority. We'll see. We'll show that here shortly. So orange dash text. And we're going to do the curly brackets. Drop down. We're going to do color attribute assignment there. And they want it to be orange, I'm assuming based on the name. And there you have the orange hello world showing on the screen over here. No, it doesn't matter whether you declare this CSS above or below the pink text class, since ID attributes will always take precedence. And that's true, because what we're going to do is we're going to cut this and show it here as we paste it above the blue. Still, it's orange. that takes precedent. Uh, did I not close this bracket? I did. How did the bracket not get included? Apparently I forgot it. So even with the bracket forgotten, it's so powerful that it still superseded it. That's amazing. Okay, so above the pink text, and there you have it. The display is self-explanatory. Now objectives, your H1 element should have the pink class text. Got it. Blue. Got it and the ID of orange. I do remember the ID being applied to the end. So if you want to do maybe proper notation, proper, uh, what's the word? Syntax, maybe. I'm not sure exactly. It might depend on where you're working, but either way, apparently it reads it. There should only be one H1 element, which is that. Whatever's in between these two tags here. And Technically, it's it's this here, those words. Your orange 
text ID should have a CSS declaration. We declared that up here. And your H1 should not have any style attributes. So there are no style attributes here. We just reference class and ID. Whereas uh, a style attribute, for instance, would be what you're putting here, color blue. So they're saying don't put color orange down here, that you have to actually call orange text as a, a declaration or as a uh, uh, an element or whatnot. It's almost like a function, like what you created. Okay, your H1 element should be orange. Yep, that was the display over here. So now that we've finished this, we're gonna run the test. You can see the test is uh, successful, very good, but we wanna get help just to make sure that I'm actually doing this correctly because I am still learning. And here's uh, the example here. Purple text, green color. This will make the example be green because I actually really always. Okay. They put the ID first on this one. On a previous challenge, I had seen the ID be last. I don't think it really matters, to be honest. But it's good to know that we're on the same page. So, yeah. After you run your test, then submit your work, and that will save your progress. Good job being 66% of the way complete with the basic CSS section of this course, the web certification course. I am going to take us to the outro and reverse it a little bit. I am Finimus. I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching. If you feel like this video was helpful, hit the like button. Um, more content like this, you can subscribe. Any questions, post them down in the comments below. Have a good day, everybody.